The police felt they had enough evidence to arrest him because of sexual fantasies. Maybe he is a little bit out there, a little bit different. That doesn't make him a murderer. Welcome to True Crime Unraveled, the show in which criminologist Onodoro Townsend and me, Yinka Bikini, dive right into the heart of some of the biggest true crime stories. We'll be digging into the cases, the investigations and the outcomes, and taking a look at some of the amazing documentaries and dramas that have brought these stories to life. In this episode, we'll be discussing the four-part drama, Deceit, which tells the story of the police investigation into the shocking murder of a young mum on Wimbledon Common in 1992. And as shown in the series, we'll be discussing what happens when an undercover police officer becomes sexual bait to catch a murder suspect. A young mother repeatedly stabbed. It appears to be a random killing. I've got two witnesses that put him five minutes from the scene when he claims he was at home with a headache watching a quiz show that wasn't even on. We want to put you right at the heart of it. We need you to indulge his darkest fantasies. I know what I've signed up for. Do you? Yeah. Do you? You're bait for a serial killer. She subjected Stag to quite deliberate manipulation designed to get him to incriminate himself. And I used to think he was this fucking monster. But what if he wasn't? Can you talk me through the case? Yeah, of course. So back in 1992, in Wimbledon Common, a young mum was stabbed 49 times and subsequently died. I mean, you can imagine the shock. Broad daylight, young mum, such a brutal attack. Mm -hmm. And it sparked this national obsession. The police were really under a lot of pressure to find the killer. Who was the suspect? It was a man called Colin Stagg, a bit of a loner, he also walked his dog on Wimbledon Common, so he was known in the area, people recognised his face. He yeah. lived there for a long time. Okay. He was also a pagan, and that sort of fed into this mystery around him. How did they decide that this was the guy that they were going to go after? He matched a facial composite by a witness of the area. Okay. He was around the right age. He was then interviewed, and he totally denied his involvement. But the police continued this line of investigation anyway. They didn't believe him. They raided his home, and when they did that, they found a black sheath knife, a leather-studded belt, a pair of black gloves, and they also found a pentagram. So that's playing back into the fact that he was a pagan and this sort of mystery and a cult. And they thought that this combination of items, along with the nature of the crime that had happened, all just seemed a little bit suspect. It made people suspicious in the area, and the police, of course, are under that pressure. There was a female police officer who was given a, a sort of pseudonym of Lizzie James, mm -hmm. went undercover. So in deceit, she's Sadie, right? Yes, that's yes, right. Yes. I think that's not her real name in the actual case, but it's all fictionalized, obviously, to protect identities. Five months she spent feigning a romantic wow. interest in Stag. Well, we do have a clip where Lizzie, the undercover officer Sadie, Professor Britton and D.I. Keith Pedder are devising an investigation to eliminate or incriminate Stag. This is not a trap. This operation has been designed to allow Colin Stagg to either implicate himself or eliminate himself from the inquiry. If he shares the same sexual deviancy as the murderer, he will reveal it. I do not trust that this stuffy okay, professor good. man truly knows everything about sexually deviant fantasies. How long do you think it's going to take? Once the fantasy exchange has started, you should have gone the rest of the way within two months. Did they say after two months? But they did it for five. You'll play the part of a disturbed young woman with a dark secret in her past. Dark secret? A history of involvement in a satanic cult. And they've done that because he's pagan, right? Yeah. Pagan does not equal satanic cults. I used to work in a hippie shop and I'm pretty sure none of them had committed murder. And you must never introduce any violently aggressive or sadistic fantasies into the conversation. These two must come from staff. So here we can see Professor Britton setting strict rules for Sadie during the investigation, which seems perfectly ethical. This is why it's such a frustrating watch, right? Because we know that's not what happened. We know that she sent explicit sexual letters that really glorified violence. If that's the initial brief that they were given... They went off-piste. How far off, off the did cliff. they skew? They jumped off the mountain. Yeah. 
it's only as time goes on, she's starting to go, well, hang on, the things that I'm seeing really isn't lining up with what this professor and what my superiors have told me. But why would you question that to start In off with? In too deep. Yeah, way, way too deep. We have another clip where Lizzie, the undercover officer Sadie, meets up with the suspect Colin Stagg. Now she uses provocative, sexual and deviant language to try and elicit a confession from him. But if you're not that man, Colin, and you haven't done those things, then you will never be able to fulfill me. The thing is, I can't compete without men. Well, then I've gotten it wrong. She told him that she wished that he was the man who did it, morally and ethically speaking. That's literally putting words in someone's mouth, right? He's a lonely guy, sexually inexperienced, and so it feels like this sort of vulnerable part of this man's personality was totally exploited. She essentially is, is angry at him for not confessing mm. and physically rejects him, and I think is this the point when he's gonna say that he did it just to get her back on side? Exactly, you can imagine. And you know, sometimes it's like, oh, I'll just say it, just so that. It's kind of emotional torture. Instead of trying to solve that crime, you were in Hyde Park talking sexy with Colin Stagg on a bench. The police felt like they had enough evidence to arrest Stagg. And he spent 14 months in custody before the trial. And it was thrown out. The judge said that they had tried to incriminate Stagg. They hadn't tried to eliminate him, as they'd claimed. The judge referred to it as deceptive conduct of the grossest kind. The police felt they had enough evidence to arrest him because of sexual fantasies and so role he, play. This is a real man's life. Maybe he's not your everyday person that you meet. Maybe he is a little bit out there, a little bit different. That doesn't make him a murderer. We have another clip where we see Colin's dad giving a statement to the media. This is after his acquittal. My life has been ruined by a mixture of half-baked psychological theories and some stories written to satisfy the strange sexual requests of an undercover police officer. Can you imagine the shame? Like, well, they didn't even apologise for 14 years. No, please don't turn it off on my account, Acosta. You know, you've never done anything nice for me before, so if you start now, I know I'm totally fucked. Boy, oh boy. So, Colin's life was ruined. Lizzie, she appears to be suffering mentally as well. If you just put yourself in her shoes for a moment, where they're telling you what you need to do, it's your superior, it's a doctor, and they're literally just boiling you down to your anatomical parts. That's the fact that you her... match the profile. And that's not her value as a, as a police officer. Is there not something wrong with this? Yeah, I mean, there's like a fundamental imbalance. This is a, a lower level officer. So if they're sat down and told, we think this suspect is the one, why would you think otherwise? I mean, the case actually became a poster boy for how not to do a honey trap. I don't think that you can confess to a crime if you don't know you're confessing. No, and it's based fundamentally on lies and deceit. You're fundamentally setting up a false scenario, right? If we're going in and presenting lies, how are we then assuming that anything given back is truth? It doesn't add up, it doesn't make sense. What if he went out and did something because he thinks it's gonna appease her? Exactly, he wants to impress her. It's so gross. All he did was walk his dog on Wimbledon Common. Yeah. That, that's it. And be into some kinky stuff, and I'm not here to kink shame. No. I think the kink shaming in this is ridiculous. It does seem like a dangerous position to have one expert saying, oh, that sexy stuff's too far. Because otherwise it's just one guy's perspective on what's good in bed and what's not. And is that evidence? Like, no. If Colin had done it and they had used all of these tactics, ding, 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 smoking gun, you've got your man, would it all have been okay? No. I don't think I'd trust the confession. If five months down the line, after all of that, he went, oh yeah, no, I did do it. I don't think that would be enough because there are famous cases where people confess when they didn't do it. Because of what they had done to get that from him, it's not admissible. No. It would probably get thrown out anyway. Because they spent so long on this ridiculous operation, they missed the actual person who had committed the crime and that meant that two more people lost their lives. It was a long time until they identified who the real killer actually was. We're talking 14 years later. It was in 2006, 
they retested some evidence from the Wimbledon case and the police linked two events, questioned the suspect who was already in Broadmoor Hospital for the second case and he admitted it. That's when Colin got his apology. He received, I think it was £706,000 in compensation. Not enough. Everyone's life is ruined because they decided they wanted to catch flies with honey rather than vinegar. And to me, it's disgusting. If you want to watch The Seat, you can catch all four episodes on all four, along with a whole range of other amazing true crime programmes.